Welcome everyone to season four of the BizHack Live Strive 305 Digital Marketing Masterclass Series. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the host of the Masterclass Series and the CEO and founder of BizHack Academy. And we are in for a treat today with Suzanne Jewell. Um, Suzanne is gonna be talking about how to become a mindful marketer, how to focus, engage empathy and embrace challenges. And uh, we're so thrilled to have you here today. Um, Suzanne uh, is, a, is a very special person uh, in, the, in my life and in the ecosystem uh, of South Florida entrepreneurship. And I'm so excited uh, to share her, uh, her with you guys today. Um, I wanna thank the Office of the Mayor of Miami-Dade County Daniela Levine Cava and the Strive 305 initiative for small businesses for making it possible for us to have this wonderful masterclass series. And I wanted to welcome uh, from the office of the mayor's diverse, the office of diversity and inclusion, Danilo Vargas to say a few words uh, about why the mayor's office supports this masterclass series in digital marketing and, and to talk to you a little bit about Strive 305. Yes, thank you so much, Dan. And it's so great to be with you, Suzanne, Tiffany. Uh, it's a pleasure. I always look forward to these classes. They have been amazing. I always learn something. I've been in marketing for 20 plus years and I still learn tons from these classes. So I just wanna welcome everybody. As Dan said, this is part of the Mayor's Drive 305 initiative. The mayor has been very clear from day one and I've been working with her for more than four or five years. Uh, I was her a manager of her Accelerate South Dade Small Business Incubator that she formed when she was a commissioner in District 8. And uh, now as mayor, she wants to take a lot of those things that we did at uh, Accelerate South Dade in Cutler Bay countywide. And Strike 305 is a program that seeks to fill many of the gaps and challenges that small business owners face. And one of those is marketing. And the reason I'm so excited always to be in these classes is that if I believe the key to success is in your marketing, that you have a great opportunity to build value for yourself and for your customers by becoming a more masterful marketer. And so these classes are, are so exciting because every single time I'm on here, I learn techniques and strategies that can literally create more uh, connections with customers that can actually buy the services and goods that you provide. So this is part of the mayor's plan to make it easier than ever in Miami-Dade County to start and grow a business. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm ready with my notes, Dan, to take a bunch of notes from Suzanne. Mindfulness is a great topic, and I'm just really curious to see uh, what we learned today. So thank you all so much for being a part of this. Well, thank you so much for making this possible. And, you know, I'm excited. We have uh, big plans, uh, the mayor's office and BizHack, Danilo and I, and um, we're, we're really excited in the coming weeks and months to announce some uh, new initiatives for the second part of this year into next fiscal year. So thanks again, uh, Danilo, for your partnership. And, you know, ultimately your mission with Strive 305 and BizHack's mission uh, is the same, which is we want to hit 10,000 small businesses and create a transformational impact. Um, and what's so exciting is a part of transformation is about mindset. And that's really the focus of today. So um, I did wanna take a, a few more minutes and just acknowledge some of our other partners. Our media pon uh, sponsor is South Florida PBS. I'm an old NPR PBS guy. So it's very pr I'm very proud uh, that the, we have the support of the local PBS station and their health channel. Um, and then we have an extraordinary group of promotional partners. Um, Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, uh, ICABA, uh, the Miami Foundation, the Idea Center at Miami-Dade College, the American Marketing Association, uh, CIC, uh, the South Florida Interactive Marketing Association, Miami Bayside Foundation, Access Helps, the Community Fund of North Miami-Dade, the FSMSDC, uh, Florida State Minority Supplier Development Council, Creation Station Business, Cutler Bay Business Association, Key Biscayne Chamber of Commerce, Coral Gables Chamber of Commerce, Aventura Marketing Council, Miami-Dade Beacon Council, and the Coconut Grove Chamber. Um, these folks are really important because they're the ones who helped get you guys here and they help us uh, expand the network 
uh, of biz businesses that we're able to support through these master classes. And if you uh, are a part of a chamber or a part of a business support organization um, that you think could benefit from being uh, our promotional partner uh, and would love to see your logo on here, uh, you can reach out to uh, info at bizhack.com and we're happy to, to chat with you about that. Um, as I said, I'm the CEO and founder of BizHack. Uh, I have a background uh, in media, PBS and NPR. I was a host of a radio show uh, called Under the Sun on WLRN, uh, you know, a few years back, one of the first podcasts uh, ever. Um, and, uh, and now I am the head of uh, BizHack Academy. I am myself a small business owner and entrepreneur, and um, and I'm very honored to be a student in these master classes. Um, we actually have five master classes in season four. Uh, it's the largest master class uh, grouping we've ever had. Suzanne is uh, master class number four. One week from today, we're going to have Dave Bricker to talk about storytelling, and I hope you guys come for that. You always ask this question, so pay attention. We're going to uh, give you guys a handout after today's presentation with key takeaways from Suzanne's presentation. So don't feel like you have to take mad notes. We'll give you that handout as a follow-up and a thank you for being here today. We'll also give you a link to our YouTube channel and we will have by the end of the day tomorrow, this recording up on our YouTube channel so that if you have people you wanna share it with and we really love that, you can share it. If you wanna watch it again, as you may want to, you can watch it again. You're also, automatically registered for next week's masterclass and all of our upcoming masterclasses. So you'll start getting reminders from us about those. This is a uh, sign up once and stay signed up for all of them. So, uh, you know, we have now uh, nearly 1200 people who have registered for these masterclasses, uh, which we started back in October and the list keeps growing. And if you feel like you know someone who would benefit from these masterclasses, uh, please uh, sign them up and have them join us. Uh, we've been seeing uh, nearly 100 people, uh, more than 100 people per session on average, and we know we're making an impact. It's growing every week. Um, at the end of today's session, I'm going to do a little bit of an info session for those of you that are a little curious about BizHack uh, and the work that we do. So uh, at 1.30 when we wrap up, uh, if you want to stick around, I'll share with you a little bit about that and open it up for any questions about how we work with businesses as a, as a, uh, as a for-profit. Uh, and uh, Tiffany is gonna put the link to our application. We do run a scholarship program for underserved businesses, women and BIPOC owned. So if you fit into that category and you're interested in learning more about our scholarships, uh, please go ahead uh, and apply. And so with that, uh, I wanna welcome Suzanne Jewell to the stage. Um, I like to give what I call sentimental introductions. Um, these are her bona fides, um, but I wanna share with you something that happened actually really recently, just a couple days ago uh, about Suzanne that I think tells, me, tells you pretty much everything I think you need to know about her, which is uh, one of the organizations that I volunteer for and that I support is the Chapman uh, uh, Partnership, which is one of our main resources for homeless folks. And, you know, from when I was a kid, I used to go to soup kitchens in Philadelphia with my parents and uh, I volunteered for the Special Olympics. And then now as an adult, you know, a lot of my volunteer time goes to, to Chapman and the, and the Chapman Partnership. And um, they, they asked us actually, uh, BizHack, they asked me to lead like an exercise at their recent town hall meeting. Uh, and they were gonna do it twice, once in their downtown Miami office and once in their homestead office. And uh, Suzanne might talk about this, but Suzanne's living down in South Dade now. And I just was called to, to make sure that like, yeah, I'll do the one in Miami, but let me introduce them to Suzanne um, and let her lead the exercise uh, at the town hall in Homestead. Well, anyway, <laughs> I get like, five phone calls afterwards from like the CEO, the head of communications, like from the Chapman, And they're like, where did she come from? This woman is extraordinary. And not only that, but we are now partnering her with our chaplain and we're gonna build out a whole curriculum to talk about mindset 
and mindfulness in our staff and in our, um, you know, the, the homeless folks who we help. And um, it just gave such joy. And then, of course, I got this insane voicemail, which I've kept from Suzanne talking about like how thankful she is. And, and um, Suzanne is just someone who has had a lot of personal adversity in her life, who has been at the highest levels of corporate America, who has in this sort of next chapter of her life found her truest calling that integrates what she learned at the highest levels of corporate America with what she had to learn in order to cope with some significant health issues. And she's integrated that into what she calls the mindful entrepreneur. And it's like one of those people where no matter how much she achieves, you know how much more is on, on, on the plate for her. Like, I guarantee you guys, the 65 of you who are here right now in this moment, that you will look back on today and you will say, I was there with Suzanne back when she was a little bit of a well-kept secret. So this is like watching the Beatles in a small pub in Liverpool before they hit it big. Suzanne Jewell. Wow. Um, you know, you I made you cry. I, you made me cry. Like usually like that happens at the end, you made me cry. And there are tears of joy and, um, Oh my God, I'm just delighted to, to, to see all of you. And Dan, Dan, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for the years of belief, for the always keeping an open door, for inviting me to the table. Um, I met Dan at the uh, Cambridge Innovation Center not long after it opened. I was the first person who saw one of his social media ads and I made a phone call to him. I was like, let me use my phone instead of go through this whole thing. And we met. And I said, Dan, here's where I need help. And I shared with him that I had done the global TV world that I was in. I moved here 26 years ago. Um, you do the math um, to work with the Cisneros group that was coming out of Venezuela to launch AOL and Direct TV and a bunch of other television entertainment platform projects. I handled all the branding and marketing and public relations for 47 countries total, including but not limited to the south of France, all of, all of South America. Long story short, I met Dan and I said, I know how to spend a million dollars on global marketing and I have no clue how to spend 25 bucks on Facebook. I was like, I know how to do that, but I don't know how to do this. And that was five years ago. And um, I now uh, not only continue to run the Mindful Entrepreneur and am honored to sit with all of you here today to talk about what does it mean to be a mindful marketer and a mindful entrepreneur. Um, I'm, 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 I'm so touched by the courage of what Dan has done. And without being able to see each of your faces, I literally want you to take your right hand and cross it over your left shoulder. And I want you to give yourself a pat on the back because you woke up above ground today. And so did I. And Dan shared that I have some increasingly interesting rare disease issues, one of which includes a little two millimeter unruptured aneurysm at the back of my brain. And I woke up above ground and so did you. And the most beautiful part about that is it is an opportunity for us to do what we're here to do and be on purpose about. And I sharing with you today is part of my purpose because if you can't tell, I'm grinning from ear to ear, it's part of my passion. And I'm honored for us to jump into what I'm gonna share with you in terms of mindfulness and marketing. And the first thing I want to do is I want to see, I'm going to give away a little treat. Who can tell me what movie this came from? If you want to go somewhere, you want to be somebody, you've got to wake up and pay attention. Dan's like, damn, the girl can even sing. You didn't know I could sing. <laughs> Old days, Miss Michigan, another story for Sister Act. All right, Tyra, I have to make sure that you have my email because you are going to actually get a little mini mindfulness session with me for knowing that that was from Sister Act. And it's Sister Act 2 and Vanessa. All right, both of you, I'll give you both one. And the reason it's important is because as we move into what we're going to talk about today, whether it's you building inner self-awareness or you actually building awareness about what's going on in your environment, that includes your market, that includes your customer, 
And mindfulness could not be a better way to help you wake up and pay attention. And what I'm gonna do before we actually jump into the deck is I'm gonna ask how many of you by a show of hands or put your thumb up, throw you could throw your thumb up on your screen if you want to. How many of you have been looking at that little pink jar behind my shoulder on my shelf going, what is that thing Suzanne's got on her shelf? Danilo has, I can tell by his face. He's like, I've been looking at that. Tiffany already knows. And I am going to share it with you because if any of you have any idea, throw this in the chat. Do you know how many thoughts you actually have a day? Oh, you've been looking at the happy face. I love it. I have a very interesting shelf. Um, how many thoughts do you have a day? 60,000, Teresa says. All right, so over 75, thousands. All right. My friends, this is what I call shiny object syndrome. And it is all of the glitter and shiny objects that are rolling around in your head on a daily basis. And it actually is glitter and it actually is glue, and it's a public spaghetti jar, but it is one of the best tools that I have as Susie Sesame Street, which I'm not, but I'm pitching to get the job for Susie Sesame Street, because this little show and tell thing, if you right now sit with your back straight, you're gonna actually do mindfulness with your eyes open, let your front be soft, put your right foot intentionally on the earth and your left foot intentionally on the earth, and keep staring at this jar, listening to my voice. And what I want you to do is literally feel the seat beneath you. Is it a soft office sofa? Get in contact with that feeling. Is it actually a firm office chair? Maybe you've got your legs crossed like I do because that's how I like to zoom. And the reason I'm doing this is because I actually am sharing with you the short amount of time it takes for those 70,000 thoughts to settle. Keep staring at the jar and now put your hand on your heart for a moment. And if you could describe the feeling or the sensation in your heart right now with one or two words, what might that be? Maybe it's grateful. Maybe it's joyful. Maybe it's a little anxious. Whatever it might be, just check in. Check in for a moment. Arrive here for a moment. People are sharing that there's calm, there's stillness. And now what I want you to do, and I'm gonna keep it where you were all looking before anyway, I want you to actually press your palms together. Relief, Dan says. Put your thumbs up against your heart. And I want you to bow your head for a moment. When was the last time you got out of your head and paid attention to your heart? And now bring those hands together in front of you and rub them together to get some energy back into this moment. Put your right hand on your right cheek, your left hand on your left cheek, and welcome back to this moment without even going anywhere, without even closing your eyes. And look, my friends, what has happened to your monkey mind and the 70,000 thoughts that have been rolling around inside of your head. And if I could take a picture of all of your faces, because you can see Tiffany and Danilo and Dan and I, we all look like we just got Botox. And do you know how long that was? three minutes. It was only three minutes. So what I'm going to be teaching you about learning how to gather your attention, that pay attention, if you want to go somewhere, you want to be somebody, you better wake up and pay attention, is because this matters for your business. Knowing what your mission is and knowing how to be able to make sure you're not caught by all those shiny objects, because those shiny objects, my friends, on this wheel of attention, actually are on the outside and constantly trying to pull you away from your focus. Constantly trying to get you to pay attention maybe to another project or maybe to partnering with someone or maybe to expanding your mission. If you're in a nonprofit, that's called mission creep. If you're fo focusing on your mind, it's called being distracted. So we're talking about that and how it matters to your mission and what it is that you're trying to do in your business, very importantly, and we're gonna jump in now. 
I'm going to share. Give me some thumbs up, guys, if you can actually see my screen here. And we're going to awesome. Jump into our presentation mode. And we're going to talk today about why modern attention training is key to your success. And one of the things that has actually been shared, and Dan posted it if you saw the emails about this, that the CEO of Microsoft has actually said in five years, one of the most valuable skills that you will possess, whether you're an entrepreneur or an employee, is your capacity to pay attention. We're losing it. We don't live in a tension economy. We live in a distraction economy. And when you actually move on that wheel from being focused on your mission focused on your email, focused on making a partnership, and you start to let yourself get distracted like those shiny objects in the jar that I showed you, you actually are paying attention and no one's paying you for it. You are becoming part of the distraction economy. I'm going to invite you, if you're able to, encourage you to literally put your phones down for this and to literally turn off your notifications. And it's an important thing to do because you're actually gonna offer yourself the gift of your own attention. And today you're gonna to learn about the mindful entrepreneur mindset, the ABCDs of mindfulness, which is your attention and your breath to help you calm that distraction, why modern attention training matters, and the mindful formula of how to focus, follow through and finish. Because focus is the first step, staying with it so that you follow through and then that you actually wrap is the discipline and the practice. Here's the first question that we're going to each invite ourselves to ask. Did you know that of the 24 hours that you have in a day, which is 1,440 minutes, so write down those numbers if you don't know them, because I'm about to ask you to subtract from 24 hours, how many hours you sleep, figure it out by the minutes. So 24 hours, if I sleep eight hours, that leaves me 16 hours left. 24 hours minus six hours, that leaves me 18 hours left. 47% of the time that you are not horizontal, but vertical, you are actually not in the same geographic location that your body is. 47% of the time you're vertical and awake, your head is in the argument from last night or the dirty dishes or the bed that you didn't make. And that creates a certain sense of pull and sometimes depression or your head is in the grocery list you need to do or the presentation you need to do or the client you need to talk to when you're done paying attention to us here today and you start to ruminate and that creates anxiety. So by not staying in the moment, by not staying present where your body geographically is, not only are you not productive, you have a wandering mind. And a wandering mind comes at a very high cost. A wandering mind is an unhappy mind. Contrast it with this. How many of you, because like me, I, I think you can probably tell I love doing this. I absolutely adore this. When I'm in the jam of getting ready to work with Dan and do some of these fun things like we did at Chapman, something happens for me for I'm uber focused. I'm in the center of that wheel. All of those thoughts are calm. And by the way, look at how beautiful your mind looks. And this is where the creativity and the productivity lives. And what occurs for me is the right email pops in or the right image for me creating a Canva deck um, or the right idea. And all of a sudden I'm in flow because I'm focused. And when I'm in flow, I'm flourishing. And when I'm in flow and I'm flourishing, I'm happy because my mind isn't wandering. And so it is literally your capacity to pay attention in terms of your own well being as a solo business entrepreneur, as a multiple serial entrepreneur, as a CMO, or like me, I'm now a chief experience officer for one of my clients, the Patch of Heaven Sanctuary. When I am in a very focused, hyper um, uh, clear way, I'm, I'm tapping into my creativity, my productivity, and I'm happier which makes for all sorts of other amazing things unfolding. Here are just some little tidbits. We're not taught about the nature of our mind. 70,000 thoughts, you saw the proof in the actual jar of what occurs when you let those thoughts calm down. You did it without your eyes even closing. 80% of your thoughts, my friend, are actually repetitive. 80% of what you are thinking in that 47% of the time that you are awake and vertical 
is actually not productive because it's repetitive. And then 90% of those are actually negative. So one of the reasons it's important to learn how to also put down all of that chewed cud that you keep chewing on over and over again to get a new thought is to actually set down the baggage. And what we're going to do before we move to the next slide is we're going to actually practice a little moment that's called unpack the backpack. I want you to sit with a dignified seat, a strong back, and a soft front. Let your back stack like coins. Intentionally put your right foot on the earth and feel it touch the ground. Put your left foot on the earth and feel it touch the ground. And if it's available to you, let your eyes close. And if not, simply let your gaze fall to a 45 degree angle and let your gaze just soften for a moment. Catch in and touch in with where in your body is your breath in this moment. Is my breath high up in my nostrils? Maybe it's down in my belly. Sometimes putting your open hand on your belly, letting your thumb touch your belly button and actually cupping your lower belly is a great way to just get in touch. Where am I breathing right now? This is important friends because you breathe 22,000 times a day and you will probably never stop to touch your breath. And you already got the benefits of doing so because it calmed your mind. And intentionally, again, I want you to turn toward an imaginary backpack if it were on your back right now. I want you to imagine if you were walking toward the edge of a lake, you can see a dock off in the distance going toward the sunrise or the sunset. And in your backpack, you're going to silently name to yourself three prominent things you are carrying. Maybe it's anxiety because it's tax season and you either have to file or you have to do the work to help people file. Maybe you've got a pitch that you need to present. Silently name to yourself anxiety, overwhelm, name it. Naming it helps us begin to tame it. And now in this short practice, imagine yourself continuing on that shore, walking toward that dock, sensing your breath becoming gentle and move toward the end of that dock with the backpack of whatever you're carrying. Walk out on top of the water, looking down into the clear pool, glassy, maybe icy blue color Maybe it's like the Crystal Springs up in Florida. Maybe it's like a cenote down in Mexico. Get to the edge of the dock. Sit down, let your legs dangle a moment. Put the backpack down next to you and pull out of the backpack the most prominent difficulty you are having right now. Overwhelm, expectation, anything that's happening for you, fear, concern about your health or a loved one's health, give it space and let it sit next to you for a moment. And be aware in your body you feel this. Is it a tight throat? Does your palms start to clench up into a fist? Do your shoulders rise when you think about it? Just touch into it for a moment. And now take your attention away from it and look out across this body of water where you are seated on a dock and see the bigger view. See the big sky. Imagine that if you actually had next to you a glass of water and a spoon of salt, by putting that spoon of salt in that glass of water, you would make salty water. But don't put the salt there. Pour the spoon of salt into the body of water beneath you and let it dissipate. When you bring your trouble to a large enough space, your worry, your anxiety, or your overwhelm can dissipate. Open your eyes now 
and gently decide to get back up on your feet in this practice. Stand above, no longer seated in equal partnership with the concern or the anxiety or the overwhelm, but standing above in this spacious place of the big sky and the big water. And decide to turn around and walk away from the backpack. Leave behind the prominent emotion, the anxiety or the overwhelm. Have that feeling of nothing no longer being carried on your shoulders and keep walking. Walk all the way to the shore. Make your way to the shore and stand one more time, turning back to what you had carried, leaving it behind. And now open your eyes for real if you have not already. Shake your hands a little bit, get into the room a little bit, get a little bit of movement into your body a little bit, roll your shoulders a little bit, maybe raise your arms. Welcome back, my friends. That is one of the ways you use mindfulness to put down what you're carrying. And what we're going to talk about is how the fact that learning how to do what we just did and in a moment, a matter of moments, you did it in a very short window of time, you were able to gain calm. You were able to connect with what was going on inside of you, but you were able to walk away from what it is that no longer serves you and reduce your stress. In front of you, and I'm not gonna read every part because you're all extremely smart and you're all very good at blowing through these things extremely quickly, and you also just had a firsthand lived direct experience. But the mindfulness and attention training that you just got a taste of is extremely important to what you do as a company, as an entrepreneur, or your employees for all of the reasons of reducing stress and gaining mental clarity. And because we need to learn how to stay present and not be absent. That is the challenge of our times. I would love it if you would, when you look at this image, on the left, what does that dark blob of a brain with a lock in it signify to you? And throw those answers in the chat. Shifting a moment to get your mind in gear. What does that look like? Who sees in that kind of blob of darkness, closed-mindedness, closed-minded, locked potential, locked in our own thoughts, so many thoughts you're stuck. Brain freeze. Oh my God, I love that brain freeze. And what about on the right side, the green with the growing plant? What comes to mind when you see this? What's there? Open, growth, zen, growing. You are awareness, clarity, ease, uh, negative versus positive. This is brilliant. You, my friends, are looking at the difference between a fixed mindset, which is locked, and a growth mindset, Tyra, ding, 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 ding. You got another one. You nailed it. That's what it is we're looking at. And my friends, this is why your potential as an entrepreneur, as a leader, as someone who's guiding your own personal growth and growing, guiding the professional growth of others, need to understand the nature of your mind and what this does when you are actually engaging in this. Take a moment and look at yourself. Don't necessarily share here, but be honest. Do I sometimes understand failure as a limit? That's the second to bottom one on the left. Do I sometimes give up easily? Tell yourself the truth. And if needed, put your hand on your heart because that's always a great way to work through something that feels a little tough. And then lean into the growth mindset and look at this and say to yourself, you know, I actually do focus on the process in the middle there instead of the end result. And Kirk said something about Buddhist principles, and this would be non-attachment. Do the work and sow the seed and plant the, the plant, but don't be attached to the outcome. Knowing that by planting seeds, you're actually building something that will eventually have good fruit. What I'm sharing in front of you now is, whoops, something extremely important to learn about when you're looking at the issue of how do you take these principles and put them into marketing? And I don't know if any of you by a show of hands have ever engaged in uh, human-centered design, but one of the most important things about human-centered design when you're building your business proposition, what is my proof of concept? What am I actually trying to create as a minimum viable product? 
What pain point or problem am I actually solving? And what am I looking at in terms of being able to connect with my customer? This is one of the steps in the startup space where I teach at Babson's Center for Women's Entrepreneurial Leadership or Miami-Dade College's scale-up program at the Miami at the Idea Center. And we sit down and we look at customer connection as if we were them. Empathy is when you actually put yourself in the shoes of someone else. You attempt to walk in someone else's moccasins. And one of the most important things one of my startup coaches shared with me is why you need to, on number two, fall in love with the problem. Maybe your um, ultimate goal for working with your customers is to be able to, in my case, get them to use my apps of mindfulness on demand in the moments that they have anxiety or that they need some calm. So the A word for anxiety, the C word for calm. Me figuring out what does my customer say when they're in a moment of anxiety? Oh, they basically feel tight in their throat. They actually feel shut down. They feel like they want to either run or they want to freeze. All of these things are extremely important to know. And I love that Kirk saw this because he was about to lean into the next screen, which is all about what Maya Angelou, one of my biggest heroes, has said is that people will forget, they'll not remember what you said to them, but they will remember what they made you, what you made them feel. And when I first began teaching around branding and marketing and communications based on my own experience, one of the biggest things I realized is that people do not buy products, goods, or services because of the product, the good, or the service. They buy the product, the good, or the service because of the way they perceive their perception that it will make them feel. When I was a little girl, I had a grandpa who had a very old Mercedes Benz and I was in kindergarten and we got hit by a drunk driver and we were safe. And we walked out of the car, even though we got hit by a drunk driver. Years later, when I became 16 years old and I had money saved in my account and I wanted to buy a used car and my dad was helping me decide which car to buy, I didn't understand that Mercedes was a brand that costs more money than a Volkswagen, but what I did understand is that I had an affinity to want to get whatever I could afford in that Mercedes because I felt safe. And I actually found a little used Mercedes, and I was so happy with that little car because me as a brand new driver felt safe. I still didn't understand at 16 years old what the branding and what it was that Mercedes had done in that regard, or even Volvo, which is also known a great deal for their safety, but I had a firsthand lived direct experience. And so that's why empathy, that's why working on what it is that Kirk brought up when Bruce spoke is about feelings. And we ourselves need to be able to understand how our attention and our breath actually tie into what am I feeling? Because if you've noted in every little pocket we've paused, I've gotten you to check in. I've gotten you to check in with what's going on here in those 70,000 thoughts, which look at what happens. We've been here about 30 minutes. The longer we have been able to sit, the more calm our mind actually is. And when we learn how to gather and focus our attention, which is this little wheel we started with, and we learn how to focus it like a flashlight, we actually have the ability to calm our distraction. I've got a perfect experience right now that someone is using a blowing machine outside my window, and I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it's a great, I'm glad you can't, it's a great distraction for me to learn how to stay fully present right now. Here is what your attention wheel looks like that you saw me provide you, the outside of it, my little drawing, and what occurs is that when we are able to stay in the center of that focus and not be drawn, or if you were a theater person, you would have been hooked by a cane and pulled off stage, you can stay in the present. You can actually stay here by not being pulled away by what it is that's occurring on the outside. Why does any of this matter to what it is that's happening in the business world? It matters because highly stressed employees and entrepreneurs cost approximately $2,000 to the bottom line if you're not well. 
Or like me, one of the other interesting health experiences I had was I burned out. I was living the life of an entrepreneur living in Miami. I was working with the Gates Foundation in Africa, traveling to Ethiopia, and my mom was dying of cancer in Michigan. And that commute laid the groundwork for me to actually burn the candle at both ends in such a way that I did not sustain myself well. So one of the most important things, Kirk also burned out, one of the most important things that we can do besides learning how to feel into what our customers are looking for and how to connect with them at the level of feelings is to absolutely be able to make sure we have well, well care and self care for who we are. Because if you've got a proof of concept, a minimum viable product, and you've actually got an investor and those are the three legs of your table to build your business, the fourth leg of your table, that pillar had better be self-care because you may not have anyone else to depend on, but you. We've been talking about all of this, but what the heck is mindfulness? It's how to pay attention in the moment, non-judgmentally and with curiosity and it helps you to literally be able to stay on purpose because you are being on purpose about paying attention. Here is the most interesting thing you will ever learn about mindfulness if you've ever taken a seat and actually done a practice. You're sitting, you've got a pain in the neck, it finally calms down. Your hips hurt, they finally calm down. You actually are sitting and you actually are focused on your breath. And all of a sudden, oh, I've got that proposal and the deadline is at five o'clock. It's not that you had the thought, it's that when you recognize you have the thought and you go, oh, let me capture that and turn it back around and bring it to focus on my breath. That moment, that is a moment of mindfulness. That's a moment of awakeness. That's a moment of you actually being able to discern in your 70,000 thoughts. Oh, gosh, that's right. I was here. I went here. Let me come back here. This is you learning how to actually stay paying attention. Why does any of that matter to your mind? Beyond your happiness or your flourishing or your flow or your capacity to not have a wandering mind, it matters because we're learning that the brain actually has a stunning skill called neuroplasticity. We have an ability with the brain, if this is one neuron and this is another neuron, that if we practice mindful meditation to pay attention to our breath only, let's say we practice it once, then we practice it a second time, then we practice it a third time. We do it for only five minutes each time. This other neuron starts to pay attention on time number three it actually grabs the synapses here and says, oh, huh, you're talking to me. And it eventually, if you do that three times and then you do it three days and then you do it three weeks, actually starts to build, rather than dental floss between your neuronal networks, it turns it into rebar. And this is how you build an atomic habit. It's how you hack your habits. And this is how you actually help the mind be able to turn toward what it is that you are attempting to stay focused on. I'm going to make certain that I give you one of my favorite on the fly practices. Yes, by the time you're done today, you will have done three little drop ins together. And this one is not Dan's old employer PBS uh, public broadcasting service, which is my favorite TV station in the world. It is about pause. It's about breathe. And it's about smile. And once again, because you've already sat, let your foot go to the earth. Let your other foot go to the earth. Let your back be strong and stacked like coins. Let your eyes close if that's available to you. And drop in. Realize, wow, I even know now muscularly that I'm going to meditate. I'm going to have a moment of mindfulness. And in this moment, note that you are actually engaging in that first letter P, you're pausing. And once again, intentionally, I want you to actually follow your breath. 
find at the entrance of the nostrils where it starts. Let it come to the back and to the top of the mouth, dropping into the throat, into the lungs, touching the belly, and turning around and making its gentle exit out of your body. Follow the breath in one more time. And now imagine, like I did the other day, going into the Publix across the street from the Homestead Air Force Base. And I was in the 10 items or less line. And I saw someone in front of me with one item. And I had a meeting to go to, but I needed to get something at the pharmacy and I had to check out because I had one other item I bought. I started to feel that this woman, as she was speaking to the lady who was checking out with the little baby that was in her arms, that I judged she was taking too much time. I felt my throat start to get tight. I felt my chest start to buzz. I felt my ears start to get kind of hot. And what I noticed was I was actually occupying my anxiety. I paused, my eyes were wide open. I did two calm breaths like we've just done. And then, and do this with me, let the right corner of your mouth go to your right ear and the left corner of your mouth go to your left ear and smile. And the moment I did pause and I breathed and I smiled, I came back to the realization that, oh my, this person just needed to talk to someone. I don't know if she just needed to have a conversation with the checkout lady. Wow, only 10 seconds or 20 seconds went by. I opened my eyes and open yours now too. And when I got to the actual cashier, I said, my, that was an actually really cute little boy I just saw. She said, wow. She said, did you like him? I said, yeah, he was really sweet. She said, that's my son. She said, my husband was killed in Iraq and my mom comes through once a day and she buys something so that I can see him while she's babysitting him all day. So, you know, my friends, we never know when we say things why we need to pause and recognize we, we need to potentially walk in someone else's shoes. What if that were one of your employees? What if that was one of my team members at my new client space? This is why learning how to do things like how to pause and how to breathe and how to smile are so key. And what you're looking at in front of you that you literally can see on my screen here is what happens to your mind. And now that you've actually seen what it's like to have a calm mind. And when you look at what's in front of you, you have a thought and then you start to feed the thought. And then the thought and the emotion actually starts to feed this feedback loop. And before you know it, you've actually occupied like I was occupying my anxiety. I occupied it for maybe 10 seconds, maybe a minute. And I was able to slow my roll. I was able to slow down, you're moving too fast and I was able to be in the moment. So this is one of the reasons amongst the many why it's so important for you and me as an entrepreneur, as someone working in the county, as someone who is leading the marketing for an organization, is that we are in an incredibly interesting environment as human beings right now. Evolution, when you look at it, happens when there is a compression on the living systems. And I would venture to tell you that stress is compressing the human evolutionary experience. Our ability to stay present, to breathe, to pause and smile actually helps us not burn out. And so one of the things that I want to be certain that I leave you with today is it's extremely, extremely important for your own well-being for your ability to actually stay on mission. Remember, your mission is at the center. Remember being able to connect through emotions, through an empathetic capacity to speak to your customers, 
to understand what they're feeling. All of these add up to why being a mindful practitioner, why actually incorporating that into your marketing and why actually understanding your mindset matter. I wanted to do this with a little window of time because I know that often when I've done this with Dan before, we haven't left much time open. And there aren't too many times people get to actually speak to a bona fide uh, marketing or a uh, mindfulness teacher. And so I'm going to open up the floor. So start thinking about um, those thoughts while, while I share with you. And I'm just going to give you a quick overview of where I'm at now, because if you're interested in engaging any further, um, Dan uh, insinuated that I had moved down to South Miami. Um, I recently began working with a 20 acre forest and nature sanctuary called Patch of Heaven. We are located in the Redlands. And my role there is the three things I love most in life, marketing and mindfulness and motivation. And what we have done is we have restored an old growth Florida forest. We care for bees and trees, birds, bats, butterflies, buildings that are historic like the Matheson uh, summer home that's on our grounds. And we care for beings. I am actually there to be able to help bring as many of you as I can to walk the earth in this space because here's the most interesting thing of all that besides learning how to be mindful, 20 minutes in nature will reduce the cortisol in your body. So my entire entrepreneurial focus there and the book I'm working on is called The Nature Pill. And I'm inviting you to come down. I'm inviting you to take The Nature Pill um, Dan was talking about what Chapman's going to do and we're going to do with their team is we're going to actually bring them all in to see the 19 foot cenote that's full of koi. We're going to bring them uh, to see the Zen garden. We're going to bring them to see what we've rewilded of 15 years from the old growth forest, which is part of the 10 acres and a new part that we have actually reestablished from being a shade and container nursery. So if anyone wants to come next Friday, Earth Day, one o'clock, I would love it if you join us. We're gonna do an Earth Day nature talk and walk. And now I wanna open the floor um, for anyone that wants to share, if you, if you wanna share, if you've never practiced before or what that was like for you, um, you know, any questions you've got, um, and maybe you can help me with that a little bit, Tiffany, if anyone answers or asks a question that I might not be able to see. Yeah, of course. As of right now, we don't have any, but I actually had a question for you myself. Okay. Um, so I feel like oftentimes you get stressed over just things going on in life. But for me personally, whenever I take a pause to be like, calm down, at the same time, I'm like, I'm wasting time from doing things that I should be doing. So how do you kind of overcome that and really take that time for mindfulness? So one of the things I would share with you, and if I had one um, in one of my little um, drawn things, I'd hand it to you, I would write you a permission slip. I would write you a permission slip. And that permission slip would say, I am allowed to pause. And you just saw all of what it is that you can benefit from because here's one of the most interesting things, folks. We're losing our capacity to pay attention. You actually are not effective multitasking. It is a lie that you actually think that you are mastering multitasking, but you are actually losing your capacity to stay present. You are missing out on flow and flourishing. So the most important thing is I give myself permission. And if you noted today, our teeny tiny little pauses, our first one was a minute and a half. Our second one was a little longer, maybe four minutes, about three and a half or four. It doesn't take that much. Here's what it does take though. And anyone here who's a meditator, raise your hand or share this. Once you actually taste that sensation of the settling, because this is spaciousness, friends. This is what happens when you actually let yourself pause. This is a much clearer space to function from for clarity, creativity, and productivity. This is what most of us are running around doing though. Which one of those actually helps you focus? We already know the answer. We just need to learn the practice. I'll tell you also what's really important to know. The people who are practicing this, 
are not just like me geeks that, by the way, where I happen to, to live um, is also one block away from the um, Wat Buddha Sangi uh, Buddhist temple. And on Sunday, they just had their Thai New Year celebration. And I got to sit with the teacher, Prakesom, for two hours. So for me, that was like sheer joy. That isn't required, though. All of you just got to taste a little bit of it. And once you taste it, because the world we're living in right now is become hyper vigilant and incoming, like incoming on our nervous systems, our nervous systems are being worn down. Rather than taking a pill, if you knew by focusing on your breath for five breaths would actually help your nervous system be in a better state, why wouldn't we do it? Adrian, one o'clock, and I just threw the link up there. It's called Mindful Nature Talk. Ping on that. It's in Eventbrite. And, um, you know, get comfy. Give yourself a half day retreat. It's going to start at one. Wear some comfy clothes. Head out of Miami between 20 and 30 minutes. Um, we've got a CNN meteorologist that's going to talk about her book called Taking the Heat. And we're going to do a, a nature talk, a garden chat, a light nibble, and then we're going to actually do a, a nature walk. So I hope you come. So I, I had, thank you so much for that it was beautiful. And I, I did have kind of a question, you know, we talk about mindful marketing and, and this is a digital marketing series. And um, a lot of what we've talked about is really, I think how as the owner of a business, as the an employee at a business, as the representative of a brand, like how to be at your best self Yes. Um, and how to kind of express the essential qualities, the, the core values, the core mission uh, of that brand. You know, we talk about this in the lead building system is the foundation. The other part of this that I wanted to talk to you about, and I also see Danilo has a question, so I'll, I'll ask mine and then he'll ask his, is you really altered my consciousness when you talked about that Publix line and you're sort of seeing something happening uh, and you have a certain interpretation of it. And I think about that person in this metaphor is like your audience. So you're the brand, right? And you have to be in a good place to be able to communicate um, effectively. And I'm, I'm gonna take a little bit of an executive privilege here. And I wanna just share with you a quick story uh, and then I'll ask my question. So. I have probably given, just as the owner of this company, let's call it 300 um, like webinars or, or live events, whether they're classes or hosting this. I've been in front of a public 300 times over the last seven years and I love it, right? Like some people get afraid from that, I get excited. Well. I was on vacation the other week <laughs> and uh, I was asked to present at 8 a.m. and I was in the central time, so it was 7 a.m. on my vacation to a group called the 10,000 Small Businesses from Goldman Sachs. And I'm an alumnus of the program. Um, they're also kind of my ideal customer. So I said yes. Now I was super relaxed, I was on vacation, it was spring break and everybody was asleep. And so like, I'm a pretty boisterous dude. I kind of toned it down a little bit. Anyway, I show up and it's just a, it's an AMA, it's a Q and A. Like I don't have any fireworks or presentation. It's just like me answering questions. Anyway, I knew something was different from almost minute one, but by the end of the hour, I was just getting bombarded by like the for my former professors in the program, five different people, almost 25% of the people in the call set up one-on-ones with me and, and something was different. And so I kept, I asked for a recording. There wasn't a recording, unfortunately. So, so I said like, what did I say? And I asked, this amazing woman named Luli B, who is like the um, overseeing the the session. Luli, what did I say? Because I need to keep saying that. And she said, "Dan, dude, 
what you say are the notes. What was amazing about that presentation was the melody that floated on top of the notes. What was amazing was the sense of control and confidence that you had in the material and the giving spirit with which you shared that knowledge. That's what people were reacting to. And so us as marketers often think it's what we say, but it's so much more about how we say it. So I just wanted to share that with you because, you know, what I've learned from that is like, I did yoga this morning, so I could be fully present for you today. Uh, I'm about to say something about Lilia, uh, which is going to be from uh, the depths of my heart. And what I realized is when you show up at your best, you attract like a magnet your ideal customer. And that's where that Publix story came in how devastated you would have felt if you had bugged them and realized later that that was her son yeah. that she was pausing over. So- and, and Dan, uh, Dan, I would share with you something really important and I know you wanna say this about Lilia. Here's, here's what you're reflecting. You were present. You were fully present. Being present and performing is the difference between doing and being. You occupied your mastery. And so what you actually did was you were present, you were masterful, and you were not performing and doing, you were being. Mm. That, that, that's where my friend, your head and your body were all in the same moment. There was nothing in the front, there was nothing in the back. All of those jaggedy things that normally might be there were gone you were fully present, you were flourishing. And what people caught was that mm -hmm. they caught it. You know, this is where Oprah says, be responsible for the energy you bring into the room. Your energy that day was just magnetic. That happened to me the day I went to the Chapman thing. I, I didn't know it was going to happen. You know, it, it, it's not like I know how to turn on the button for it, but being present is what you just described. It was less about, it had nothing to do with what you said. It had everything to do with who you were and you were being present and you were masterful because you were occupying who you are. There was no performance, doing versus being. And, and you know, it's interesting. It goes back to Tiffany's question. And I did want to give Danilo the chance. We can go a few minutes long if you can. Uh, and, and then I'll say my thing about right. Lilia, but, um, you know, Tiff, sometimes if you take that time to be, you find shortcuts. In other words, if I had done my normal MO, which is to be a little salesy uh, and, and, and to kind of push reality to fit, you know, square peg round hole, I would not have actually achieved what I was able to achieve by just relaxing into the pose and being. And so I think what, what part of the lesson, and, and trust me, I need to relearn this lesson every day. I'm not a guru, uh, but I've, I've come to recognize that having a good night's sleep, taking time to meditate, like you're more efficient and effective in your work and things get done faster. And so though you're actually like grinding less, you're accomplishing more. Yeah. Yeah. Danilo. I want to say I've never been in a Zoom session or a webinar like that, Suzanne. Um, so it was a real gift. Uh, thank you so much. And I want to say what I want to, I'm a marketer and I've been an entrepreneur and I've had those days where I wasn't sure how I was going to pay the rent. And because you're, you're stressing over the things you have to do, the pressures constantly. And I can tell you that this is a key to really, because to be effective in marketing, you have to show up to the marketplace with a generous spirit, with generosity, with giving. And it's hard to occupy that space when we are just flooded with all this cortisol and, and stressors and having this practice of pausing the way you broke it down to us, you transported us to that space that we can occupy anytime we feel besieged by these types of, of worries 
that, you know, as human beings, let's be honest, we're all at some point plagued by, I think that's gold. And I just want to thank you from the heart. That was a really amazing and powerful session. Thank I'm, you, Dan. I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you, Danilo. I'm just honored. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your reflection. That was beautiful. Thank you. So we are coming at the end of time. And so Kirk and um, we, we got some great questions from Kirk Jimenez uh, that I encourage him to ask you uh, personally, because he had some really thoughtful answers there. Um, but what I wanted to do uh, is, um, you know, I would like to uh, invite Lilia uh, to, the, to the front of the room. I know she's sitting right there. Um, I, I wanted to share with you guys something um, joyous, which is tomorrow is Lilia's last day at BizHack. Now, why is that joyous? Because it does break my heart. Um, she's been with me for three years. She's been with me during the depths of COVID when I wasn't sure what the hell I was doing or whether we would survive. I remember the day that she conceived of BizHack Live. And I remember asking her the Friday before we did our first session, are you sure about this? Like, this is gonna be a lot of work. And I remember she paused, cause like, look, I'm your classic visionary leader who gives too much work. And they even have a name for it in BizHack, they call it Dan Bushing. <laughs> <laughs> so a Dan Bush is when like Dan comes up with another smart idea. So here was Lilia coming up with a really smart idea. And it was sort of like, are you sure? right? Because you tell me I Dan Bush you all the time. Are you Dan Bushing yourself? We also have a safe word at BizHack called eggplant, which we use whenever like something's getting awry. So like called egg, I'm calling eggplant. Are you sure you want to do this? And she's like, no, people need us. Like what we know uh, and what people need right now, this was like April, you know, during COVID. Um, people need this. And we have the network of instructors. We have the knowledge and we need to share it. And we need to share it generously. And you know, I, I was weeks away from becoming insolvent. Like the business was really struggling. We were an in-person training company before COVID when we launched the BizHack Live series. Anyway, we gave and we gave generously. And Lilia was the heart and the soul of that effort. And she organized the sessions such that I basically just showed up and, uh, and everything was set. And, uh, I think we did 60 BizHack Lives, won three national awards, um, got the attention of the mayor's office, created this masterclass series. We're now getting large grants from government organizations to do more kind of work like this. Enrollment was never higher than during that year we ran those weekly sessions. And the expressions of love and loyalty that I've gotten, we've gotten from that effort have been heartwarming and frankly, probably kept Lilia in this role far longer than she wanted to <laughs> because she loves us and she loves the role, but she also has her own aspirations. So Lilia on, on Monday is gonna start um, as an account manager at the top PR firm in South Florida, RBB Communications. Um, I personally met with the CEO and I said, you'd be insane not to hire her. I'm heartbroken to let her go, but you have to let a caged bird fly. And so I just wanted to publicly acknowledge you, Lilia. Um, we have recruited the most extraordinary uh, young woman in Tiffany, Laura, who will carry on the legacy. Um, recent FIU graduate, you know, we're thrilled to have you a part of the team. These are big shoes to fill. And uh, I wanted to give you uh, the last word, Lilia, um, I know this is a bittersweet moment for you. Um, you know, she said, uh, Lilia is kind of, um, we joke that she's like a duck in that she's like calm, cool, and collected and her feet are going crazy underneath the water. Um, and you can tell that like, she is so fabulous as the co-host, if you will, of these events and welcoming you in to our home here at BizHack Live. But, you know, her feet are moving. And uh, she said to us the other day at the end of a meeting, I love you guys. And I was like, wait a second, what did you just, cause that's not Lilia. Like I'm the guy who says, I love you. Lilia is like the duck who's like calm, cool and collected. And so uh, we love you too, Lilia. We appreciate you. 
we honor you, we acknowledge you, you know, this is your baby and we will take care of it for you. And so I wanted to give you a minute just to, to reflect on the past three crazy years together and, and what's coming next. Thank you, Dan. You always said like, I at some point I'm gonna make you cry and I think this is that day <laughs> you made Suzanne and I cried in the same session so that doesn't happen every day uh, so yeah I mean thank you and I'm very honored and blessed and grateful to to be able to be part of this team and this amazing initiative uh, that we started in 2020 when COVID was uh, hitting us and we were like what are we going to be doing so this was actually the first uh, session that I stayed like as a guest and and with and like ending this with Suzanne's it was just amazing and, and seeing how being mindful uh, of everything that you do every day will just make you a better human and a better professional and I think that I have grown tremendously personal and professionally uh, with the team with then at the beginning it was only the two of us and then we have a whole team uh, in charge of everything and this initiative specifically it's one of the the the, the babies that, that we uh, created and that has won awards and we we are looking for the the the, the year so I couldn't feel uh, better. Uh, I have my heart in, in my throat right now. And, and thank you for everything. And you will be knowing about me every day. It's not that I'm going to just leave uh, like that. So thank you, Dan. Thank you, uh, all the team. I know that Steph is not here. Or probably she is. I'm not sure. Uh, Tiffany, I know that you're going to be doing a great job. And thank you uh, for your love and support. And yes, I love you guys. And I will love you forever. Thank you. Well, goodness, Tiffany, you have some big shoes to fill. Um, but the good news is that Lilia, in her infinite generosity, has not like succumbed to the, you know, the senior second semester senior syndrome, and she is like sprinting through the finish line to, like, just give us the most buttoned up handoff imaginable. Um, I want to just reflect on one other thing. Um, when you own a business, you have choices about how you build teams and treat people. And this is ultimately a really human endeavor that we're doing. You know, what essentially you do as an entrepreneur and as a business owner is you basically marshal human energies and you point them in a direction. And then you let them take it. And we fail, I fail every day at this, right? I, I don't, I let my anxieties get the better of me. I, I, I'm too sharp. Like Danilo and I exchanged texts this morning that were driven out of anxiety that I messed up on and I apologize for it. Like, it just, it just, it's like part of the entrepreneurial journey is to be frail and to be weak and to be not at your best self and to just hope and pray that you have people on your team who forgive your weaknesses and recognize sort of what you're trying to do. We have a belief at BizHack that we serve the totality of the person. Whether you're a client or a member of our team, we recognize that like that lady who is delaying you up in the public slime, like, these are whole human beings with, with personal lives that, and, and histories that impact their ability to do the work. And you know, one of the greatest gifts I've had as the owner of BizHack was going to Lilia's wedding and seeing her pick up drumsticks and start to rock out in her wedding dress. Uh, it turns out that her entire family has a little band with her brother on vocals and her mom and her dad. And she's like, literally like freaking rocking it on the drums. And honestly, of, of all of the victories that I've had and all the businesses that we've helped and all the not that much money we've made, it's like that moment when I was sitting there in Mexico City watching Lilia slam on drums. And like Lilia, by the way, is tiny. Um, and she hits those drums hard. Um, and it was just absolutely like 
that duck on water analogy. Like it was absolutely the last thing any of us expected to see from her in her wedding dress. Like uh, that was probably the best moment I've had at BizHack. Um, just, just the gift of being able to bring her into the team and then to get to share that moment with her. And I know how important it was to her that, that I was there to share it. And so, you know, I bring this up basically to say that, um, you know, running a business is really hard. And so all of you guys who've stuck with us until this minute, um, I just want to honor that. Like, it's really spiky. There are good days and there are a lot of bad days. And we do this for two reasons. One is we hate having bosses, but the, the real reason we do this is because we feel hell bent on doing something bigger in the world. And we are all builders, but we can't build alone. And so, you know, I, I just wanna say thank you, Lilia, for, for helping me build BizHack to where it is today Welcome Tiffany to part of, uh, to be part of the team. You know Danilo, Suzanne, you're all part of this team. Uh, we have a long way to go, a much bigger building to build, and I'm I'm just honored uh, to have you guys on that journey with me. So thank you. Thank you, Dan. <clears throat> we love you, and my parents are here listening. After <laughs> they're in the background. Yeah. Um, they they have been two years. Uh, since the last time that they came here to Miami and they just arrived yesterday. So it's just not a coincidence. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, I send them my love and I look forward to hearing them uh, on Spotify, <laughs> which your brother used to work for, by the way. Um, all right. Well, I definitely, you know, we normally would have like an info session now. I think I'd like to just end it here. But what I will do is I will stick uh, in the chat, guys. Uh, information about our scholarship program for women in BIPOC owned businesses. Apply. Part of the application is a chat with me. I'll share with you what we do. I'll talk to you about the uh, the scholarship funds we have available and we'll see if there's a fit. Uh, but, you know, if you want to be a part of the family, uh, if you like a little bit of what you heard here today, let's have a conversation and let's see if you can't uh, join us on this journey. Uh, with that, thank you again. Suzanne, you always create, I, I can't imagine what it's like to live your life. Like you always create these like insane spaces of, of love and kindness. Um, and that must be like exhausting. Like, it's like, oh my God, here we go again. Uh, so thank you. Honored and thank you everyone for coming. And um, may this be the, 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 the first of many times we sit together mindfully. Love it. All right, everybody have a wonderful night. Uh, day uh, and we will meet here same bat time same bat channel in one week to talk about my very favorite store uh, topic in all of digital marketing which is storytelling with the irrepressible the funny Dave Bricker he's a uh, toastmaster and an excellent speaker and a super quirky guy uh, he lives he's lived on a sailboat his methodology is called story sailing uh, and you're in for a treat so we'll see you here in a week <laughs>